home means to me. Um, God, do you know what? That's actually quite a hard question. Now I think about it. I guess home for me is where I go after I've been working, where I relax. Home to me is a place that is safe. Where my friends are and where the people I want to be around are. It's just nice to have everyone around you. It just makes you feel like home. Where my heart is, where my head is, where I rest. Where I feel the most comfort, where somewhere's warm. Home's, I guess, a sense of place. Uh, somewhere that you feel like you belong. I feel safe, secure, that kind of thing, I would say. I've lived in Bristol for about 12 years and had about that many landlords as well in the time. Um, and most of the time it's been like a room in a shared house where you can get any old people living with you, any situations. Um, it's very chaotic. Um, and finally I've got a flat to myself and it's quite cheap rent, affordable rent anyway for me. The trouble is the landlord is a slum landlord and it takes forever to get anything done. Um, I'm quite scared to even ask him. And then the issue came up of my boiler breaking down um, and the landlord was like just really slack about getting anything done. So for three months I had no working boiler for a hot bath. So I was literally boiling pans on, on the hob and boiling kettles to get a bath together. The landlord was doing nothing. Bristol's a really interesting place where housing is concerned because it's very much uh, it's a small city, but it's very got a lot of frontline movements going on. Um, well, ACORN is, yeah, we, we describe ourselves as a community union or, or community organisation. Um, the way that we work is um, you know, we pick a neighbourhood in a, in a given city and we, we knock on people's doors, surveying them, talking to them about the problems that they feel are the, you know, the biggest issues facing themselves, their families, the local community. And then we get people together, organise them to take action to, to improve the situation as, as they see it. It's a great organisation and it's very much about the voice of what the people who are members and who we speak to on the streets and um, knocking on doors, what they actually are bothered about, the issues that are real to them. And the thing that's come out on top has really been housing, particularly in Easton, which is where the first branch was in Bristol. What we're doing is we're knocking on people's doors, trying to fill out information from people who rent their homes privately, from private landlords because what we're trying to do is find out information about landlords who are good and letting agents who are good, but also letting agents and landlords who are bad. And the reason for that is we've written an ethical lettings charter that sets certain standards for the private rented sector. So it calls for affordable rents, for decent physical standards of housing and for the use of longer tenancies. Yeah, do you guys rent? Yeah, we do. rent. Um, is it a shared house? Yeah, it's a shared house. Um, is it through a letting agent or a private A lot of the situations are caused by, are caused by really financial and social deprivation um, and a lack of support from funding, central government funding and local funding to do anything about it. You know, it all started with Thatcher selling off the council houses and basically nothing's got better since. It used to be that yeah, the majority of people lived in some sort of social housing and of those people who, who bought those houses, now, you know, a large proportion of those houses are now rented out by buying to their landlords. So it's not even that the people who bought the house are living in it. It's just that now they've become rental properties in the private rental sector. When the council saw them, all those off, they didn't build any more. So the, you know, the available housing stock has gone down. More and more people are competing for, you know, a relatively decreasing amount of houses, which means that it's a letters market. People can charge whatever they want. They don't need to worry about keeping houses in good condition because tenants are ten a penny and you know if one tenant turns their nose up at a house with the ceiling falling in or you know damp or mould all over the walls there'll be ten behind them you know he'll say that no, I'll take it. What you find is that um, a lot of these landlords um, they won't they won't do anything because they think people are isolated they think it's individuals that they're dealing with that's why community union is brilliant because it's like people are coming together you know it's not just 
it's not just one person on their own that could be exploited, it's the whole community want, want that landlord to, who remember the community as well to change the way they're acting and just treat people with a bit more space. So. So you've got you know, rental insecurity, people um, not knowing how long they're going to be able to stay in a home, um, landlords being able to get people out of houses you know, with minimum notice, um, often with no notice, which is, which is illegal. That adds to the homelessness you know, situation in the, in the city generally. Um, yeah, we think that the council are estimating there's going to be around 200 rough sleepers in the city by the end of the year. Social support has been cut down massively to anyone that's disadvantaged. You know, so it is very much up to communities now to kind of rally together and create groups like ACORN, um, independent groups, to try and change things. And in a way, that's actually kind of quite empowering because it's sort of a big, you know, to the system. Well, I'd say there's a... There's a, there's, a large, there's a big disparity, there's a big skew to individualism at the moment, and that's, uh, that's for political reasons, so that uh, once people are separated, they can be exploited. So I'd say the, the fix-all solution to most people's problems today, whether that's work or uh, accommodation or money or anything like that, is to collectivise. People are always trying to change your mind for you or keep it set in a certain way. So if you, if you can see another alternative to the situation you're in and you can change your mind about possibilities, um, then you'll be freer. At the Land Trust, we're just getting towards the finish of our first housing project, which will be 12 affordable houses. And I think we probably believe that although it's been very, very difficult to do that, and at times we've almost been minded to give up, that the experience will be very useful and subsequent projects will benefit from that and it should get easier as we go along. So although I'm not claiming that we've achieved very much, I am definitely holding out the hope that we may be able to build on what we've done and do a lot more in the future of a similar kind. I think what's great about these kind of community housing projects is that they open up the potential for loads of different models of ownership that aren't conventional because we've gone from a society where most homes were rented, like either privately or socially rented, but at quite low levels of rent, to a society where people have been kind of encouraged in various ways to own their own home. As the level of crisis rises and the need becomes more and more unavoidable, People will do all sorts of things. And also, I'm sure, from the local authority and government point of view, the, the status quo will find it harder and harder to hold the line on an ideological basis when there are more and more people being more and more visible who don't have anywhere to live or nowhere good to live. And so, what can we do about it? Well, um even what we did about it here was a lot of people, because people do own their own homes here. We, we just started off by having our own conversations among neighbours and tried to see if we can find our own solutions to that, and that's still an ongoing conversation. Um, but in terms of projects more broadly and new projects that are setting up, there are loads of different models that we can use to keep housing more affordable and more within the control of the wider community, so it's not like a single landowner that or house owner that has control over it. But for example, if you have a community land trust, that's an opportunity for the homes to be owned or part owned by a group that's representative of the wider community. And that can make sure that the people who are offered homes there are people in real housing need. Home is really important. Home to me is somewhere that you can go to be yourself, to be able to take off your work clothes and slip into your PJs when you want somewhere that I can have a nice hot bath, chill out. I think when we go to work, we're always just, even if we love our job, we're acting, you know, we're, we're out there, we're doing what our role is. When you're at home, you can just, it's about being you. I always think back to those little books I had when I was a kid where like the rabbits lived in the middle of a tree or something like that and they had little leaf beds. But even then they had like a fire in the corner and it was all kind of cosy. That's how I see a home. I, I don't think a home should be a sleeping bag in a doorway. I don't think it should be 
a horrible corner in somewhere where the landlord can walk in and start bullying you. I don't think it should be somewhere where your door doesn't shut and you're worried about the bloke that lives downstairs. I think it should be safe and I think it should be for everybody.